I am not interested in creating clones of Dennis Parent. I want to empower people to find their own artistic voice. Okay. Well, now, our decision here is one of what is the value of these shadows compared to the dark? Now, um, it, there's a pretty good jump between that deep dark and the shadow of the flower. So instead of going to like usually like cobalt blue, I'm gonna jump all the way over to my cerulean and create this next pile. Now remember, I'm not really concerned with what's happening in other parts of the painting or other parts of the subject. I'm really just focusing on the flowers. Now let's get this, let's get this uh, neutral shape here in place. So I'm gonna go with Cad Red Medium. It's pretty warm. And some yellow. Pretty neutral, so a little touch of white, just a little bit, not, not that much. I can always lighten it, remember that. I kind of want a neutral mix, which is going to allow me to sort of tip it. Now let's look at it right up next to our existing shape. Now I understand it's a little bit on the greenish side, so we're going to drop, I'm going to drop some red back in there. That's... Cad Red Medium. Oh. I said it. I did say it. Because I see it as a overall warmer. sort of warmer mix. Since they're almost pink. Yeah. Well, they're pink-ish. Pink-ish, and especially that far one over there. That, that This one here is going to definitely have a little bit different mm -hmm. constitution to it. Okay, now we're just going to put in super simple, right? Just simplify, simplify. Not concerned about any kind of nuance at this point. That comes later, of course. Right now, it's just simple. And, and it's really from this simple uh, application of the paint that we will have the opportunity to create this look and feel of diaphanous white. But we have to get it simple to start with. If we try right away to go for complexity, then we're kind of lost. At that. Yeah. Now that does overlap. But I'm gonna, once I jump over to that other flower, I'm going to tweak it a bit so we don't have to travel so far with the color later. All I'm going to do is tweak it by adding some alizarin crimson. And then I might get a little stray piece of paint here. I was wondering what that was. Yeah. This, you know, the palette had dried up paint on it, so when I scraped the old paint off, it hung around. So. Let's, let's take it up a notch, and I'm going to add a little bit more white because the alizarin tends to want to drop the value. And we don't want to drop it too much in value. Oops. Okay. Now. That gives us, so we're still in our kind of neutral mix, but we have tweaked it somewhat. Now, because this flower is actually facing away from us, as opposed to the other one, which is standing up nice and straight, 
more of this flower is in shadow. Now here's some here's a point to remember about this is that we will look into these shadows and we're going to see lighter areas, areas that are lighter than other parts of the shadow. And the temptation for us is going to be to call that, in our minds, light. Which will force us or, or trick us into painting it lighter than it really should be. Now let's just, I'm going to go ahead and quickly block this one in, although I don't know that we'll actually get to this one during this lesson. So this isn't going to be a completed painting? Oh, I think eventually we'll complete the painting, but at this point I want to get right to the lights, I mean the diaphanous light, and I don't want to delay in that regard, so that's why I'm doing it more piecemeal because of the fast moving light. All right, so now I want to clean my brush. And I'm going to jump over into my lights. Now that requires me to do a little uh, so this, palette discipline. This is going to be like four, it may a four be, pile? It, well, it, it may end up to be have? three. Now, oh. if, you know, I'm not really doing the whole painting. That, that could be uh, partly why this is happening. But um, at this point, I could probably comfortably settle on just three values. Uh, because, let's see, here's, here's the thing, here's the deal behind this, is that um, what I want to do is create a really bright light on the top side. And then I can back that bright light down in order to create the back and forth cool and warm stuff that's going on there. But I think that what we're doing is simplifying it so much that we can comfortably go with three values for this for now. And so what, what essentially we're going to have is a dark, a middle tone, and a light. Sorry, I had to open another roll of paper towels there. Alright, so now let's jump to our light and just like on a indoor still life that you probably watch me paint I start with white but I'm going to bring in some cad yellow light warm it up and some cad red medium and really get a nice warm mix going and just simply block it in no variation. I want this big contrast right there. You can hear the sounds of the city and you can hear the sounds of the birds. Got it all right here. Okay. You can hear the construction next door. Cars honking on the street, trucks honking on the street. Well, I was just going to say, it's not like we live in a neighborhood. We live in downtown. In downtown. Yeah. And we got businesses all around us, and not not other houses. I mean, a, a couple. A, just a few. There's some. There's a mix. It's mixed right where on this block, and actually all throughout downtown, there's a mix of residences and businesses. Right. Usually the residences are on the upper floors. 
and the businesses are on the lower floors. Now I'm going to tweak this a bit, just a smidge, so that it's not. What'd just, you just do? I just added a little alizarin. That's ten and a half minutes. Yeah, let's stop that. That's okay. a good, good.